Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. And today's Bible reading plan, the Life Journal Bible reading plan, will cover for the 10th of May and then the Old Testament, 2 Samuel 18, Psalm 56, and the New Testament, Matthew 27, and the New King James Version of the Bible, 2 Samuel 18, Absalom's defeat and death. And David numbered the people who were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. That David sent out one third of the people under the hand of Joab, one third under the hand of Abishai, the son of Zariah, Joab's brother, and one third under the hand of Ittai, the Gittite. And the king said to the people, I also will surely go out with you myself. But the people answered, you shall not go out. For if we flee away, they will not care about us, nor if half of us die, will they care about us. But you are worth 10,000 of us now, for you are now more help to us in the city. Then the king said to them, whatever seems best to you, I will do. So the king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by hundreds and by thousands. Now the king had commanded Joab, Abiashai, and Ittai, saying, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains orders concerning Absalom. The people went out on, into the field of the battle against Israel, and the battle was in the woods of Ephraim. The people were Israel, of Israel were overthrown there before the servants of David, and a great slaughter of 20,000 took place there that day. For the battle there was get scattered over the face of the whole countryside, and the woods devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Then Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom rode on a mule. The mule went under the thick boughs of a great terebinth tree, and his head caught in the terebinth, so he was left hanging between heaven and earth. And the mule, which was under him, went on. Now a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, I just saw Absalom hanging in a terebinth tree. So Joab said to the man who told him, you just saw him, and why did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have given you 10 shekels of silver and a belt. But the man said to Joab, though I were to receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, I would not raise my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king commanded you and Abiashai and Ittai, saying, Beware, lest anyone touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I would have dealt falsely against my own life, for there is nothing hidden from the king, and you yourself would have set yourself against me. Then Joab said, I cannot linger with you. And he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through Absalom's heart while he was still alive in the midst of the terebinth tree. And ten young men who bore Joab's armor surrounded Absalom and struck and killed him. So Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing Israel. For Joab held back the people, and they took Absalom and cast him into a large pit in the woods, laid a very large heap of stones over him. Then all Israel fled, every one to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up a pillar for himself, which is in the king's valley. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. He called the pillar after his own name. After, and to this day, it is called Absalom's monument. David hears of Absalom's death. Then... Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said, Let me run now and take the news to the king, how the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said to him, You shall not take the news this day, for you shall take the news another day. But today you shall take no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed himself to Joab and ran. And Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said again to Joab, but whatever happens, please let me also run after the Kishite. So Joab said, well, why will you run, my son, since you have no news ready? But whatever happens, he said, let me run. So he said to him, run. Then Ahamaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Kushite. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate to the wall, lifted his eyes, and looked. And there was a man running alone. Then the watchman cried out and told the king, and the king said, If he is alone, there is news in his mouth. And he came rapidly and drew near. Then the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the gatekeeper and said, There is another man running alone. And the king said, He also brings news. So the watchman said, I think the running of the first is like the running of Ahimaaz, son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and comes with good news. 
So Ahimaaz called out and said to the king, All is well. Then he bowed down with his face to the earth before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord your God who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against the Lord my king, my lord the king. The king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant and me your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I did not know what it was about. And the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. Just then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, There is good news, my lord the king, for the Lord has avenged you this day of all those who rose against you. And the king said to the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom saved? So the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise against you to do harm be like that young man. David's mourning for Absalom. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said thus, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And now we'll pull up Psalms 56. And while I'm doing that, we go through the Old Testament once in a year's time in the Life Journal Bible reading plan. And we go through the New Testament twice in the year. And so Psalm 56, prayer for relief from tormentors to the chief musician set to the silent dove in distant lands, a miktam of David when the Philistines captured him in Gath. Be merciful to me, O God, for man who would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. And God, I will praise his word. And God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? All day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. And they gather together. They hide. The, they mark my steps. When they lie and wait for my life, shall they escape by iniquity. And anger cast down the peoples, O God. You number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book when I cry out to you? Then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. And God, I will praise his word. And the Lord, I will praise his word. And God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you, for you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? So now, as I pull up the New Testament scripture today, which is Matthew chapter 27, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages on DanielParsonsMinistry.com, and we've also got hundreds of healthy living vegan recipes. Just click the Healthy Living tab, DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Matthew 27, Jesus handed over to Pontius Pilate. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Judas hangs himself. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury because they are the price of blood. And they consulted together and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the value of him who was priced, whom they of the children of Israel prized, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Jesus faces Pilate. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly, taking the place of Barabbas. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for have I, 
For I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. I said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, let him be crucified. And then the governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The soldiers mocked Jesus. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, but it put on his own clothes on him and led him away to be crucified, the king on a cross. Now, as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest also, mocking with the scribes and elders said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Jesus dies on the cross. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. Many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Jesus buried in Joseph's tombs. Now when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body be, to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. Pilate sets a guard. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how that deceiver said, After three days I will arise. Therefore, command that the tomb be made 
secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard. Do you go your way? Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. And that, my friends, is the Bible reading for today, the 10th of May. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just search for Daniel Parsons Ministry and you'll find my channel. Bye for now.